What a difference a year makes. Last year the dirt was flying here in West Dallas at Arcadia Park Elementary School. But this year is a completely different story. On this edition of School Zone Dallas, we're going to learn a lot more about Arcadia Park, as well as some other interesting stories about people from across the district. Check it out. On this edition of okay. School Zone Dallas, we'll meet a school teacher who goes above and beyond the call of duty for his country and students. Thanks guys. I'll be back later on in the show to introduce you to a group of volunteers who really delivered. We'll also meet some dedicated students whose artwork takes flight across the world. It's all coming your way on School, School Zone, Zone Dallas. Dallas. Hi, I'm Abe, a senior at Bryan Adams High School. And I'm Chase, a senior at Booker T. Washington High School for the Performing and Visual Arts. Welcome to School Zone Dallas, the monthly show that gets you up close and personal with what's going on in the Dallas Independent School District. And there's a lot to talk about. This year, 71 DISD schools rated exemplary are recognized by a Texas Education Agency, the most we've ever had. In fact, DISD has more exemplary schools than any other district in the entire state of Texas. That's thanks to all the hard work by students, teachers, and staff throughout the district. Here at Arcadia Park Elementary School, it's no exception. This is a beautiful brand new school. And to tell us more, let's join Ivan, who's standing by. Ivan? Thanks, guys. Ivan here, checking in from the library in Arcadia Park Elementary School, which is truly one of a kind. This library not only is a part of the school, but also serves as a fully functional public library made by the unique partnership between DISD and the City of Dallas. The community has responded to our, the Arcadia Park Library with, um, with oh, it's been a celebration actually, because they are the people that actually initiated it, that went downtown, went to City Hall, went to the school board and said, this is something that our community needs. So when they see the Arcadia Park Library and they see the school together, it's something that they actually did for their own community. They're very, very proud of it. The teachers, I believe they just feel lucky that they get to be here. I feel lucky that I get to be here. To me, it's like going to a big fancy bookstore. The only thing it's missing is the coffee bar. Now the school benefits because in addition to having a traditional library, they have the advantage of an entire public library at their disposal, which makes this a win-win situation for everyone involved. The Arcadia Park Library is extremely unique because we are attached to the regular school, our school, Arcadia Park um, Elementary School. So where many other public schools have their own school library, we don't have a school library, we have a city library that's available to us at all times after school and on weekends. The community benefits by having a brand new, state-of-the-art, 19,000 square foot facility for the public to use. Well, one of our great goals is combined, of course, with the needs of the community, and that is to provide parent education. And um, many of the parents in our community are stay-at-home moms, and they're asking for different types of services, not just on how to help their children, but also how to better their lives, GD classes, English second language classes. They feel, and I believe it's part of the culture too, that they need to be involved with their kids in order for their children to succeed, but they also need to model that they're being successful too. Right now, the library has 57,000 books and materials to learn something new from. So Abe and Chase, you might not see me for quite a while. For Schools on Dallas, I'm Ike. This one, these five. Thanks, Ivan. The partnership between the school and the city is a brilliant idea whose time has finally come. Let's get started with our first story on School Zone Dallas in which DISD students are getting experience firsthand about just what it's like to be a veterinarian. Here's Edward who's hanging out with some furry four-legged friends. Did he go? I think he went that way. There you are. 
Hi, I'm Edward. My little friend and I are here at the Veterinary Referral Center in North Dallas, where some DISD students are learning what it takes to give medical treatment to some of our best friends. Well, ever since I was small, I knew I loved animals, and I had like a lot of dogs and a lot of cats, and my mom already knew I was going to be a vet. We had snakes, dogs, so after that, the love for animals naturally came. I've been wanting to be a veterinarian since I was in third grade, so it was my only interest. Is he pretty friendly with people? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, there are five different, different and separate uh, veterinary practices here. They're all specialty practices. These uh, are the doctors that have gone through additional schooling and uh, training to become specialists. The Animal Dermatology Referral Clinic, the Animal Ophthalmology Clinic, which treats eyes, the uh, Animal Radiology Clinic, the uh, Internal Medicine uh, Clinic, or the Animal Diagnostic Clinic, and then the Dallas Veterinary Surgical Center. All I know is that I'm going to work with animals. That's it. <laughs> Well, the people at the uh, Townview Center called and uh, we were happy to try to set up something that would work with the Dallas Independent School District and the uh, veterinarians here as well. And they were able to uh, set up a time of the year where they come in and uh, go through some, uh, uh, spend some time in each practice. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Nice to meet you. So this is dermatology. The purpose of the shadowship is to give the students some real life experiences to realize what they're learning in the classroom, how it applies to it when they're going to be in a veterinary practice. I'm learning a lot from them. They're helping me. They're really helpful in teaching me a lot of the stuff I don't know. Every day I know I will experience something different. Like you won't ever see the same thing, especially because you're going from clinic to clinic. Hopefully it is helping me really determine what part of it I really want to be in when I graduate from college. What these students are learning is more than just veterinary medicine. They're learning lessons in life that they can carry with them into any future career that they choose. Uh, the good thing about the veterinary assisting program is if the students at a time maybe decide that this is not a career that they want to pursue, they are learning basic skills that, is go that are going to help them in any science field that are going to prepare them very well for college so that they can pursue whatever it is they choose to pursue. Uh, they seem very knowledgeable and uh, they seem to ask good questions about, uh, about what we're doing. and. Uh, for being in high school, um, you can see that they're really thinking about what they want to do with their lives and go forward, and it's, it's an enjoyable experience for us also. Oh, this is an excellent group of kids. Uh, knowledgeable, they're interested in what they're doing, and uh, they're, they're a good group and uh, a pleasure to have. Uh, students all over the district are interested maybe in a veterinary field, and our program has produced some very excellent students and has really helped them to realize their dreams. And a lot of people aren't aware that we have this program, but it is there and I think it's an incredible opportunity for the students. I'd say our furry feathered and thin friends have a very healthy future ahead of them, thanks to these dedicated and determined students. For School Zone Dallas, I'm Edward. And I'm Hannah. Thanks, Edward. Without you, this story certainly could have been a dog. I guess an old dog can learn new tricks. All right. He does a repair on the head. You know, one topic we have yet to discuss here on School Zone Dallas is the ongoing war in Iraq. It's not something that you would think would affect our world right here in DISD, but it really has. That's right. Since the beginning of military operations in Iraq and Afghanistan, more than 25 DISD employees, including teachers, have fulfilled their commitment to the armed services by going to the Persian Gulf more than half a world away. And when those soldiers return home, they receive a hero's welcome. Here's Leah to tell us all about it. Today is a special day at Julius C. E. Frazier Elementary. Major Kirk Williams has just returned from a year's military service in Iraq, and students here are ready to welcome him with open arms. Hey. 
and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. Ladies and gentlemen, Major Kirk Williams. I just want to let everybody here, everybody at this wonderful school, I want to let you know how much I really and truly appreciate what you did and the class that in which you did it in. And you're awesome. Give yourselves a hand. The way that I joined the military uh, was through my wife while I was in college. And I joined the ROTC. From there, one thing led to another. I went to basic camp. I ended up with a scholarship, and that's the way it was from that point on. I get a huge satisfaction being a part of the armed forces. It does something as far as my own personal sense of pride, uh, just to be able to serve. It's, it's, it's an honor. And uh, I, I feel privileged, actually, to be able to serve in the armed forces. Good job. Give her a hand. There are a lot of similarities in being a teacher and being an officer in the military. Several of the, the tactics that I use in the classroom as far as keeping peace and being a people person because you have to be being a, being a teacher. Just being able to be calm and be patient in real crucial situations, it helped me a lot being an officer in art. Seven times four? I believe teaching is really in my blood. And I just kind of feel like that's, that's my gift. One, two, three. The passion just comes from just loving kids, and I've been doing it, you know, my whole life. It's just one of those things. Kids are just, this is what I do. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. While away at war, Major Williams never ignored his responsibilities as an educator. During his year in service, he continued to send lesson plans and assignments back home to his mother's students in the Talented and Gifted program. Today, you will be involved or engaged. He in took on lesson. another responsibility to challenge the students here and, and that's how he came up with the idea that he was going to send them some items and challenge them with a lesson. This is a letter that came in just for you from Major Kirk. He says, how are you guys doing? It, it was, was such, such a, pleasure a pleasure receiving letters from each of you. You guys and girls asked some excellent questions. I don't think I can answer all of them, but I'll give y'all some information. A lot of you ask me if I miss my family and friends. Yes, I do. But I try to call them every other weekend. I was so pleased at how creative you all were in your writing that I went and bought some items for you all to use in a lesson. Your job is to use your creativity to create a story using all of these items. I can't wait to see what you guys will come up with. When he was in Iraq, I, I wrote him. I wrote about what did he do over there and to be safe all the time. I, I told him I missed him. He wrote me back. He told me he missed me too. It was very important corresponding with the kids. Uh, it did a lot for my morale. And not only my morale, but when I allowed some of my fellow soldiers to read some of the letters, they were like, wow, this is, this is pretty fascinating. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was great. It was a good deal. This is my gift to you. We think of athletes and other people being your heroes, and we wanted them to know that there are some hometown heroes. When Major Kirk presented the flag to us, it was really a, a big thing for us because so that the boys and girls that say are walking back and forth, they can look on it proudly and know that they knew someone who went over there and fought for this and they have a part of this. So we're very proud of Major Kirk. I have a completely new perspective on education since I returned from Iraq. What I want to bring to the students back in DISD in particular is they're our future. And what they're doing is training themselves to be the future leaders in America. And if, I, if you don't mind, I'd like to just say to the students of, to the students of Julia C. Frazier, you're awesome. And today was a, was a wonderful event and it really touched my heart. Major Williams isn't the only DISD teacher who has served our nation through the military. There are dozens of others, each with stories to tell. All I can say on behalf of the faculty and students of the DISD is thank you. 
For School Zone Dallas, I'm Leah. Leah, we completely agree. It can't be said enough. Special thanks goes to Mr. Williams and all of the employees of DISD who have served or are currently serving our country. You have both our respect and gratitude. Check it out. Right now, we're outside Arcadia Park's Parent Center. We're inside, parents are more than welcome to use the facilities and take part in language classes and workshops on parental skills. The facility also has a washer and dryer and a fully equipped kitchen for parents to use. Parental involvement is a major component here at Arcadia Park Elementary School. And just like the library, it's a glowing example of how this school not only educates its students, but works to benefit the community as a whole. That's a great segue to our next story. Benefiting the community is exactly what IBM is doing in many of our schools by being a DISD partner in education. Let's join Leanne who will fill us in with more details. I'm here at IBM to find out about all the great things they do to help the students of our district. One of the ways IBM partners with DISD is by generously sharing its rich technology resources with our schools. Well, IBM is interested in providing support for students everywhere around the world. Education is a primary focus of our philanthropic giving in the IBM company. Technology Night was started at Walnut Hill a few years ago, about five years ago, I believe, five or six, um, when the administrators there at Walnut Hill were interested in showing people and families about technology. It's grown over the years since then um, to now where every single class within Walnut Hill produces um, some technology project. Did you know that IBM mentors more than 100 DISD students through the e-mentoring program? Let's go find out more. We are working uh, with those students. Our, they have a mentor assigned to them, and we work with those students. It's uh, usually centered around academics, but it's also another way to become a friend and a pal as well. For me, it's very gratifying to be able to see that growth and development of the students and to be able to see a continuation of technology in their lives. A lot of these students have never been exposed to computers before and so it's the first step in getting them exposed to technology, getting them comfortable with it, so that we're really building the future for our community and for IBM. DISD has benefited in many ways by having a good partner like IBM. In fact, in the past five years, IBM has donated over half a million dollars in cash and in kind donations. Thanks, Leanne. Everyone involved is making a big difference. And speaking of making a big difference, parents and students here at Arcadia Park Elementary School have done just that. Recently, they raised over $1,600 for the Red Cross to help those affected by the tsunami disaster. Our hats go off to everyone involved on making such a positive impact. That's right. Students in the Dallas Independent School District have the power to make the world a better place. Yet another example is a project called World of Wings, student artwork that reaches out to people across the globe. Let's join Cotty to learn more. Hi guys, I'm here at the Ladio R. Martinez Learning Center in West Dallas. Do you know what this is? This is an airplane that's very creative. Fifth and sixth graders are getting ready to design and paint for the World of Wings project at the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. It may not look like much now, but when it's complete, this airplane and about 300 others will be on display in terminals and airports across the country. Let's go now to visit teacher Mary Jo Gardier's art class to see just what it takes to design one of these airplanes. The World of Wings project was um, something that we heard about last year and we knew that the um, airplanes would be on display and I thought, wow, what a great time, what a great way for my students' art to be exposed, to be out there for the public to see. And so they created this wonderful airplane. I painted the wing and I designed the, some of the drawings. I think there were um, 12 students that worked on it in all, and they'd come in during their class time and again work independently. And our plane was based on the different cultures, the patterns, um, the artwork, the styles. My favorite thing was staying here with my friends and having fun. It was really important for us to make the community feel like this is their airport, this is their project, 
and one of the ways to do that is to get them involved in some way. So we kind of noodled it around and came up with the idea of doing these airplanes and having arts, cultural, schools, uh, uh, government entities, military groups decorate some airplanes with the idea of international flight. The U.S. Army's Rest and Recuperation Program even sent airplanes to Iraq and Afghanistan for members of the armed services to paint. Students from the Otto Friday Junior Educational Center came up with a culturally creative design for their airplane. And we did the ancient wonders and we did the modern wonders. We did everything from the Great Wall of China, the Heads on Easter Island, Stonehenge. We went all over the globe. We wanted to make sure we covered all the continents. And then we also did the modern uh, wonders which were like the Statue of Liberty and uh, the Eiffel Tower, Big Ben, uh, structures such as that. So they got a chance to do both the ancient and the modern wonders. Well, I basically did most of the research of putting actually all the images together so I could provide all the East students what to draw. Well knowing that a lot of people are going to see our plane it makes me real happy to put a lot of work into it seen how proud and shocked and amazed that they actually did as well as they did. I think that they surprised themselves. I feel proud that everybody's seen it, but then I feel like excited because that's like part of my work out there and everybody's watching it. Uh, the one thing I learned is good teamwork and kind of work together with my classmates. They're kids. All of us are like kids at heart, you know. They're very proud. They were excited because they were being noticed for something that they worked hard on and, and was a collaborative effort and they were very successful. We really want the public to come and see the airplanes. That was the whole idea. First to get people to decorate them and then to get the public to come and look at them. As they walk through, they'll be able to get glimpses of uh, London, glimpses of Mexico, glimpses of Iraq. Uh, people that come through and live in this market um, it, it's really an exciting uh, program. It really shows the diversity of North Texas. So the next time you're at the DFW Airport, check out some of these great planes or go to www.dfwairport.com slash wow. For Schools in Dallas, I'm Cotty. Great stuff, Cotty. Everyone's planes look fantastic. Abe, is that your stomach growling? Yeah, how could it not be? I've been waiting for this story all day, and I can almost taste the pizza. But it's Saul, that lucky guy, who's over at Highland Meadows Elementary School, where Pizza Hut is on the scene. And here he is to tell us more. A hot dog. <laughs> no. Hamburger. Oh, who doesn't like a good pizza, especially when it's free? Seriously, we're all eating pizza today thanks to the generosity of Pizza Hut, who not only provided lunch for all the students here at Highland Meadows, but also sent an entire team of executives from their home office to be part of JA for a Day, sponsored by Junior Achievement. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for being here with us today. On this Friday morning, the last thing on these Pizza Hut executives' minds is cheese, toppings, crust, and sauce. Today, over 40 volunteers are heading into 28 classrooms to teach students about the free enterprise system. Junior Achievements is an organization that provides business and free enterprise education to students in grades kindergarten through the 12th grade. Um, we've been 50 years in Dallas. We're part of an international, worldwide organization um, that'll reach 6 million students around the world this year. In Dallas this year, we will reach about 38,000 students. I'd like to welcome the J.A. and the Day folks to our campus today. Gotta get a Y. Y. Gotta get a U. U. Gotta get an M. M. Gotta get an M. M. What's that spell? Yeah. What's that spell? Yeah. One of the things that I use to get volunteers is I tell them the importance of the program, which is going out and teaching economic literacy to children. Alongside that is coming out to the school and touching the people that are going to be our future employees. It's really fun. You get to learn about businesses and you make businesses too and um, you learn about stuff like um, natural resources and um, other stuff like that. It's really cool, fun stuff. Junior Achievement of Dallas um, gives these programs to students um, free of charge to the schools and we have fundraising opportunities. Um, most of our funds come from the business corporation. We have um, special events 
that we have each year that allows us to bring these out, these programs into the school. Does everybody know where Taiwan is? The curriculum that's used during JA in a Day is the same curriculum that's used nationwide. It's developed in Colorado Springs by our curriculum department and it's, it's meant to be sequential. Um, the concepts that are taught at the lower ages in the curriculum are repeated at higher ages so that the students have an opportunity to reinforce those. All the activities are hands-on. There are um, Volunteers don't just stand up and talk. Um, they actually work with the students and the students have um, activities that they do either individually or in a group that, that really graphically illustrate the concepts that are being taught. Well, we learned about imports, exports in our continents. Ashanti's Pizza Restaurant, that's a great name. Wow, look at that. I like pizza a lot. Kids only see the pizza delivery guy. They don't know that we have uh, information technology departments and finance and all the other things that go into making up a business. The added aspect of having that personal touch of a volunteer in the classroom is very important. If you made the check out to Pizza Hut, remember what it really helps the students see that, you know what, I can definitely do this. It's achievable, it's attainable, and it's something that I can work to do. Last year, over 250 companies in the Dallas area helped Junior Achievement reach roughly 26,000 students in the Dallas Independent School District. And while that's quite an impact, Junior Achievement wants to do even more. If you or your company is interested in working directly with students and instilling in them a love for learning, call the number listed on your screen for more information. For School Zone Dallas, I'm Saul. Thanks, Saul. The Junior Achievement Program has been making a difference in DISD schools for decades. Special thanks to Pizza Hut, as well as the many other Junior Achievement Program partners for making such a big impact in our schools. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this edition of School Zone Dallas. Special thanks goes to Principal Mary Davies and everyone here at Arcadia Park Elementary School. We've had a great time. Be sure to check out our website at www.dallasisd.org slash schoolzone to find out more additional information about the show. Or you can email us at schoolzone at dallasisd.org. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for joining us. And remember, there's always something going on in, in the, the zone. zone.